Hi everyone, uh, my name is Amko Dodo Arnold and I'm back again this weekend the board game called Cold Dream and I would say this is my second best game uh, apart from Hiroshima Hex this is my second best game ever since Ben brought in this new bunch of board games donated to us by our sponsors in the UK so uh, today I guess I wanted to review it because I've played it lots and lots of multiple times and I wanted to first grasp everything and then I bring it to you in a full swing so um, for those who don't know the game uh, the simple aim of the game is to reach 35 magic when you reach 35 magic it means you're the most powerful called uh, enchantress or, enchant or, pa or the one who uses the magic most because this is a game of what magic users and casters and then cultists and all that so uh, i'm going to go straight to the things i like about the game and i'll start by the game components first of all i like the idea of you're the one who makes your own board whereby there is nothing like a map or a, anything you start with uh, you will have a rule book which tells you what you already start with and you they will tell you how, how many of each you start with and according to each number then during the course of the game you will continue adding more of these cells onto the board by paying some of your magic to put them out so this is quite an interesting mechanic because it doesn't mean that the game the board is the same each time all the, all the time when you're going to play so it just changes even in the middle of the game so you, you won't have the same board over and over again uh, the next thing is the the scoreboard this this is the only thing which is basic i'd say i like it because it's game it makes the game very interesting and versatile because this is the first of its kind of this game i've ever seen whereby in each table of round or in in each column there are a lot of different things happening like in this first column each one of your uh, portions brood give you an extra energy an extra magic in this second one you can now buy advanced spells and in advanced portions and also you get a basic spell in this one you can you you all players you remove you can remove a tile from the board which you've already made during the course of the game or you can add a tile and if you've removed or added you still get a basic spell so this this makes the game like very interesting and more, more fun because a lot of things are happening every second of the game so if you're not careful you might get lost in the game which makes this game very interesting uh, it makes it very competitive and all that the next thing is the character what sheets uh, there are a lot of very interesting and character sheets which you can have this the wizard cultist shaman trickster and all that so you, you have a choice you can play up to five players or even six players it's your choice but the the, the choice of character you choose determines which game you want to play because if i choose the wizard i'll be playing spells of course because i get a free magic basic spell each have a season so every if this makes the game like versatile each time you play it because each each of these characters has its own special magic or ability which they have that none of the others have which makes it a totally unique character which is quite an interesting thing the, to make the game very simple the producers gave us a very simple summarized rule book i would say of what you do in every season since you all know and for those who don't know the game has only two seasons the market season and then they have a season and there's a summarized reference of what you can do in each season on these small sheets of paper which are which are this which have this backside but also on your own one character sheet there's a summarized what reference of what you do so this makes the game quite uh, able to be played by everyone because you don't need to go to the rule book again even though I'm going to talk about the rule book because it has a, a lot of pages. Yeah, I know it has a lot of pages, but 
all the all the rule book is summarized on here so in order for you to if you want to check for anything like a special spell or anything you want to check you, have, you just have to go back here and check there so, but it's like it doesn't, it doesn't need you to check all the time and all the time you just have to look on here onto your sheet or if it's not there or if you don't want to look there you just have to get one of these cards which are about three so anyone can play at any time can, can look at anything they want at any time the cost of the spells the cost of the basic potions and this makes the game much more interesting mm, the different uh the different things which grain up tails uh we have the spider webs the frog legs which you can get from the frog ponds and all those which you can use for your basic potions and advanced potions to brew more what? energy like this one you need <coughs> Uh, a mushroom and a, a dragon's egg which you can get from this tail but in order to get it you need to first put out the what the dragon egg what hexagon which you're going to which you're going to be able to do during the course of the game and this earns you three magic which is quite important in the game because to win you need to get 35 magic which is which makes the game like, balanced in all ways to make the game more interesting, uh, the producers added a, a few bits to the game, which is this. At the start of each harvest season, you always draw one of these cards, and that action on the card is effective for the whole the whole of that harvest season until another another one of these cards is drawn. And this one is called Hollowed Ground. Sellers can store two ingredients until the next harvest season. So this gives you like a bit more things to do on the same time. And the sellers are these. Sellers help us store ingredients for the next season because we normally can't store the ingredients in our what? normal space uh, because they will go bad. But in sellers, they, they are preserved and they don't go still. Okay. For any. For the other, th the other thing I, would, I like about the game is that it's uh, replay replayable. It can be played many times because the lot of these basic spells, which means that as you can see, this whole bit, we cannot we cannot play finish all these in one game. That's why I've tried and tried, but still we don't know all the spells which are in here. There are these advanced spells, which are like many also advanced portions basic portions we cannot play all of them so this gives the game like replayability it can be played more more and more times okay uh, i'll go to the things i dislike about the game and it's only one when the players decide to gang up on you uh, for example like if in in a game you know, the one leading everyone will decide to gang up on you like to reduce on you like in our last game Joseph, he, we, we decided to gang up on him. <laughs> he was the one in the lead, and we were like, he's about to finish. But we still couldn't do anything because it was already his game. So, um, that's the only thing I dislike about the game. Uh, do I like the game very much? It's my second best in the, in, in the games I've played so far. And is it, is it suitable for village kids in Uganda? I would say very suitable. Uh, I'll give it a level two. If you're not good with reading, it's it would be a level two to the person because uh, there are a lot of things you have to know. There are these special powers you have, and you can use them in the in the times it says on the card. And then also there are the spells, there are the advanced potions and all that. So you would have to know you not have to know how to read. So that's why I'm giving it a level two, and it's it's a very nice game. Thanks for watching the video. If you'd like more videos, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then comment on the video on the things you dislike, disagree with me, or you'd like to add on to what I say. Thanks.